I used to have piles of projects in my corner that only needed the ends worked in and that's where they would sit while I go off and make another project. And if you don't work them in as you go, it's a lot of ends to work in and most of us don't do it. If you've always wanted to crochet projects with lots of color, but were intimidated by all those leftover ends, then this is the series for you. I'll walk you through my process of working in all those ends as you go, and color work will become a fun, rewarding, and relaxing hobby for you. Welcome back everyone. We are now on the third video of our three video series on working in our ends. If you followed the first two, awesome. Now we're going on to round three of our mandala square uh, sample. Again, you can follow the full walkthrough for that. I'll also link to that in the description. So the whole point of this series is to make color work a lot more fun and a lot less work. So let's get going. So round three starts with a chain three in any one of the chain one spaces. And again, I go back almost halfway so that I can get the green end that I'm going to be working on green here. I can get that green end worked in before I get to this white one, which is going to need to be worked in. You can work more than one end in at the same time. To make this a little clearer for you guys on video, I'm trying to only work one at a time. So we're going to go back a little piece here and then it's not so bulky as well. So we're going to go ahead in here into one of these chain one spaces and we're going to pull up our yarn. So leave a nice, a decently long end. And we're going to pull up our loop and chain three. And then we're going to go ahead and do our first double crochet. So into the same chain one space, line the yarn over top of your hook. We're going to anchor it into that base. And then it's a chain two. So we're working our shell and another double crochet in that same space, keeping that yarn there, you're working underneath it. So it's getting nicely anchored in to that shell. And now we're going to work our last double crochet. So yarn over into the same chain one space, making sure that the cut end is over top of the hook, bring it up, work the first two loops, but keep the last two loops on the hook. So at this point, I'm going to take this end and bring it up to the, the height of the hook because we're going to be moving over a space and we don't want that yarn to be in the space. So we're going to take our cut end, throw it up to the top across the working yarn, holding it up there. We're going to work our final part of the double crochet. And now your cut end is up close to your hook. That's where you want it to be. We're going to go ahead now and work into this chain one space over here. So here's the trick because again, this yarn, you don't want it to cut across that nice uh, eyelet that's going to be created from the shells. So what we're going to do is go under the yarn and under our working yarn. So you're under both of them. And then you're going to go into the chain one stitch with them both wrapped around that, that hook. So you're coming back over top with the hook and into the chain one space. And you want the yarn to be over top of the hook as well, because you're always working under the yarn at the back. You're going to pull up a loop. And then you're going to pull the loop through the first two, which in actually includes the cut end. So it's kind of looks like three loops on there. And then you're going to finish off the double crochet in the last two loops and give that, that end just a little bit of a pull. So there's no extra loop showing there. And you've now worked the end into this double crochet right here. So again, we're going to work it into the base of the next shell. So go ahead and work a double crochet underneath that end that you're working in. Chain two. We're anchoring it at the base of this shell. So just keep finishing the shell. And then in our last double crochet of the shell, we work the first two loops, leaving the last two loops on the hook. Take your cut end, throw it up above closer to the hook and over top of your working yarn. Finish the double crochet. And now again, your yarn is up by your hook. So this is the tricky part and I'm going to go very slow. Holding that yarn while you're holding the piece that you're working on. Take your hook, go under the cut end and under your working yarn. So they're both over top of the hook. Then you're going to twist the hook over top of both of them and into the Next chain one that you want to work in, you're skipping a chain one here. In you go, and you want the yarn to be over the hook, the cut end 
of the yarn because you also want to work it into the base of this shell. Then wrap the yarn around and bring it through the chain one space. So now it looks like you have four loops on the hook, but one of them is the cut yarn. So you want to wrap the yarn around and bring through the first three pieces of strands that are on the hook. So bring it through all three of those. That's the first half of your double crochet. Wrap your yarn around and pull it through the last two. Now you just want to give this a slight pull so that it this loop right here blends right into your double crochet, but not too tight. And you've done another one where it doesn't show. So again, let's make our way over to this piece here. So finish your shell, chain two, and then we go again. And then we do the first part of our double crochet, leaving the last two on there, throw our yarn up and around it, finish the double crochet so everything's up close to the hook, and bring that yarn back, holding it in place, and you're gonna go into the chain one, which is right beside where I left off my white yarn. So we're gonna go under both of these yarns, into the chain one space, so you're kind of doing lots of wrapping here, and under the cut end. Now you're going to pull through the three strands and then the two loops. And then we're going to finish this shell. And what I'm going to do is that's where I'm going to finish the green because what I did have, if you can see here, I've worked it in all the way from here. So I've worked it in the base here, up this double crochet, back down this double crochet into this base, up this crochet, down this one, into this base, and again, one more time up and then down and into this base. So that's worked in there really well. It doesn't show anywhere. And on the back, it doesn't show as well. So here it is here. So this is where I'm going to finish that one. I'm not going to work it in anymore. This is why I like to have nice long pieces because I get to choose when it stops. I'm not trying to work a uh, little end in it at the very end here and it's frustrating me because I cannot get a hold of it. So it's better to have a longer piece and then you decide where to end it and then you snip it. So the other thing is, is I can cut that right now because as I said before, make sure you keep track of what you've worked in because you don't want to have some you worked in and some you haven't. Then you get to the end and you cut them all off and you realize, oh, I didn't even work that in and then it falls apart. So just cut that green one where you finished. I don't cut them right up tight because they will they will kind of adjust and they, they need a little bit of room to snug back into the work. And here we are now with the white color from the previous round. So I'm going to show you how I work that in for the other half of this round. So we're going to finish our double crochet there. We didn't do that. And then we're going to work our next shell. So here's our white. I'm literally just going to hold it at the back. I want to skip a chain and work into the next. If I were just to lie it there, which is perfectly doable, uh, you would have a bit of a strand and it could get pulled on. So instead of doing that, I can either take my hook out of this or I can leave it in if I don't want to take it out of my chain. But using this hook, I'm going to go in and pull this white, go into the back loop from the previous round, pull the white through, and then I'll just use my hands and pull the rest of the way through and do it again on the next stitch. You're going into the back loop only. You wrap the white around and you pull through, and then I just use my fingers to pull it the rest of the way through. So what I'm doing is I'm just weaving it into the back loops only, which is not going to show, so that I can get it across that space and to the next chain one. So in this case, I only need to do it about two stitches, and then I'm going to work it into this base of this shell. So now it's over here to the next chain one. I'm going to go ahead and work my next shell over top of it. So let's go ahead here and you'll see how this works. So as I work my shell, the white is over top of the hook. It's being worked into the base. And then the second half of that shell. And you can see here it got worked into the base. And you can see over here, there's no loose strand showing. And you can't really see that I've worked it into the back loops of those stitches. So let's do that one more time. 
we have the strand here waiting for us. I want to go into this chain over here, so I want to work it into these two loops just to hide it there. So we go into the back loop only, pull up the white, and pull through with my hand. And again, the next one, pull up the white, and pull through with my hand. And now we've moved it over to the next chain one space. So I've actually woven it in as I go. It's like darning it as you move to the next spot where you can work it in. So now we go into that one and work it into the base there. So again, remember, I'm, I hold the yarn with the piece I'm working on. So it's, it's almost like it's that stitch. The hook naturally goes underneath it and works it in. So I'll just finish this shell and show you the back. So there's the front and there's the back and our white, we're working it in here, but it doesn't show anywhere and you can't see any of them. This is the great thing about working them in as you go. You don't have to worry about this. When you're done this square, the ends will be worked in. So I'm just going to finish this part here and I'll show you what the finished round three looks like. So we're finished round three and we've worked the white all the way to this location here. And I did start it way over here. So I'm quite comfortable with that being darned in enough. And I can cut that one as well. Like I said, not quite tight to it. Give it a little room to breathe itself in there. If I'm finding the ends are fraying like that, I can even give them a little bit, a little bit of a tighter clip. And that is what it looks like when you do the shells and work your ends in at the same time. That's the back of your work and that's the front of your work. Thanks so much for joining me in this series. I hope you're feeling a little braver now about using color in your crochet. This may feel awkward at first as with all new techniques, but it will become much easier as you use it and so rewarding when you go to join your squares. I'll have more color work tutorials for you soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Enjoy working with color, and we'll see you soon.